Why does everything in every genre, whether it be video games, movies, politics, clothing lines, makeup lines with influencers on YouTube, it always turns into drama. And with Bayonetta 3 and the former voice actress Helena Taylor, here we are, more drama. This is the last day I'm doing audio only videos. Let's get into it. I think that, doesn't that contradict itself? There's video, but I'm saying only audio. You get what I'm saying. I'm doing just voiceovers. It's time for news. Breasts. Skip it up and that up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to make an announcement real quick. Tonight at 8 p.m. on Twitch, Jay and I are going to be there. We're going to be having fun. And at 10 o'clock in Television Amico's Retro Bro, one of the biggest white nights for the platform until the 11th hour is coming on for an interview, and we're gonna ask him some interesting questions. So make sure you go to RTU Streams on Twitch. There's a link below in the description, and I'll see you there at 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. All right, so we know the deal. Long story short, former Bayonetta voice actor, Helena Taylor, she came out recently and said that Platinum Games essentially screwed her over and was only offering her four grand to voice Bayonetta 3, which is, according to her, a huge franchise that has made over $450 million and there's merchandise. And she made Platinum Games out to be villains. But then we found out more information that she wasn't just offered four grand and that she was full of crap. <sighs> According to Jason Schreier over at Bloomberg, Platinum Games wanted to hire Taylor for at least five sessions, each paying three to four grand each for four hours in the studio. It's a lot more money than just four grand total like she was trying to make it out on Twitter. And that would be a total of about $15,000. And then Taylor turned around and asked for a six-figure payout as well as residuals for the game. Platinum said no, and they went back and forth. And while that was happening, they were looking for a new actor because they didn't want to pay her that amount of money. When the negotiations fell through, they hired a new voice actress, Jennifer Hale, and they tried to offer Helena Taylor a cameo in the game. She turned it down. And that was it. The new voice of Bayonetta was Jennifer Hale. But again, when you heard those original videos from Helena Taylor, you would think, oh my God. Like, and on top of it too, the reason why I tended to believe it, because you come out with something like this and, and expose a company, you better have all your ducks in a row. You better be honest and you better be 100% about it because you're going to be blacklisted. This is it. Helena Taylor's career is done. It's over. There's no debate about that. No one will ever hire her again because they're, a company will be afraid or a movie set will be afraid that she may do this again. Why would you want to risk that? Now, Helena Taylor turned around and said this was an absolute lie and everything was, it was fabricated and she was telling the truth. But then she then elaborated on what she said on Twitter. She had another thread and she basically admits herself without admitting it that she initially lied to make it seem more dramatic that she was getting paid less so people felt more sorry for her. This is what she had to say on Twitter. It's a fairly long read. Let's get into it. It has come to my attention that some people are calling me a liar and gold digger. I feel the need to defend myself and my reputation in the industry. As I posted on part three of my video thread, I explained that their first offer was too low. That offer was $10,000 total. Remember, this is a $450 million franchise, not counting merchandise. I then wrote in Japanese to Hideki Kamiya asking for what I was worth. I thought that as a creative, he would understand. He replied saying how much he valued my contribution to the game and how much the fans wanted me to voice the game. I was then offered $5,000. So I declined to voice the game. I then heard nothing from them for 11 months. They then offered me a flat fee to voice some lines for $4,000. Any other lies such as 4,000 for five sessions are total fabrications. Dude, you're ch I just watched your videos again, Helena. You you're you're, cha you're you're twisting the story just enough where 
you're 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 making people debate if you're telling the truth, but I I've been doing this too long. Okay, you're something's not right here, and you're not making sense. Uh, let's continue though. There were not extensive negotiations. I've also been informed of ridiculous fictions, such as I asked for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I am a team player. I was just asking for a fair living wage in line with the value that I bring to this game, which could be that you asked for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. They like. Jason Schreier got documents. He didn't just pull these numbers out of his ass. Let's continue. I was paid a shockingly low total of 3000 total for the first game, a little more for the second. I wanted to voice her. I have drummed up interest in this game ever since I started on Twitter in 2011. Yeah, but here's the thing. You were, it, that was a long time ago when the original Bayonetta was first released. That was a 360 and PlayStation 3 release. And... I know actors and voice actors, and they will take roles initially to get their name out there and to put on their resume. Don't make it like you were doing Bayonetta for charity. There's a lot of times actors will do roles for free so they can have them on their resume. So in the future, they could get better paying gigs because they have a better, more substantial resume. I know how this works, Helena, and it's not adding up. You were offered much more than you originally said, much more than you insinuated in those videos trying to make Platinum Games out to be villains. And now not only is your career absolutely ruined, no one's going to trust you and no one's going to trust your credibility ever again because obviously you'll lie to try to get your way. I'm going by the evidence that's out there. I'm not looking to demonize or defend anybody. As a matter of fact, in the beginning, I thought to myself, like I've said many times before, why would any voice actor do this? Why would any actor do this? Especially if they're lying. Because once you get blacklisted, you're not just blacklisted by one company. You're blacklisted by the entire industry. So she's done. So I'm thinking... She has to be telling the truth because why would you risk ending your career for this? But apparently I was wrong. And now I'm even more pessimistic of the human race. Helena, the bottom line is at best you stretch the truth to seem like more of a victim. At worst, you lied. Either way, your credibility is shot now. You can put up any tweet that you want to. You could try to clarify things now, but the way you colored those original videos was you were trying to make Platinum Games look awful and you were trying to make yourself seem like a victim when it simply was that negotiations fell through and you thought you wanted to be paid more. It's that simple. And you wanted to tarnish a company and hurt their game because you didn't get your way. This is why I'm a pessimist, <laughs> because every time I try to give someone a chance, they do something that makes me realize why I continue to be a pessimist. This is Rich of Review Tech USA signing out. Have a good one.